How does ultrasound work? Now, ultrasound, the ultrasound device, the probe, actually, all it does is it sends a beam of ultrasound like a knife and along the path of the beam, all the tissues will be cut or sliced by the ultrasound beam, okay? Now, the direction of the slice will always be from the skin to deep. So, for example, now this particular view that I'm showing you is from the anterior chest, okay? So, it's, uh, for, uh, it's, a, it's a view called the parasternal window and therefore, the ultrasound beam will be traveling from anterior to posterior. So, everything uh, on, on, on the top of the screen is anterior and the bottom of the screen or the deep part of the screen. So, superficial is anterior and deep is posterior. Now, when it cuts, it literally takes only one single slice at a time. So here, if I'm going to cut in this direction, what are you going to see? Okay, so let me just make the cut. Okay, and then what you will see is something like this. You will see this here. Okay, now you'll see the right ventricle then you will see the left ventricle and inside the left ventricle you will see uh, anteriorly you will see the aortic valve here and then posteriorly you will see the the mitral valve somewhere here okay and i said that the the left atrium joins to the left ventricle here so here somewhere here you will see the uh, circular part of the left atrium the so the shape of that left ventricle is cylindrical. The shape of the right ventricle, on the other hand, is round or oval. And that's because when, when the ultrasound beam takes its slice here, so once again going back and putting it back together. Okay. Now, when the ultrasound beam was taking a slice, it was it sliced the left ventricle along the long axis or the longitude you know, along its longitudinal cylindrical form but the same thing for the left for the right ventricle happened to be its short axis okay now if i want to cut the the right ventricle in its long axis what i do now is i actually have to take to turn the pro rotate the probe clockwise or it can be anti clockwise as well but clockwise is conventional and the standard view so if i rotate the probe clockwise and if I cut the, the right ventricle along this plane, now what will now happen is that I will be able to see the right ventricle in its long axis, but the left ventricle will be round and circular like this. Okay, I've just flattened it out because of my knife, but this mm -hmm. is how it will look. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you can see how in this, the right ventricle is wrapping around the left ventricle. So it looks okay. a bit like a donut. Exactly, it looks like a donut with the right ventricle wrapping around the left and this left ventricle being nice and round and circular yeah okay so all you have to know for for ultrasound is that the beam will slice the structure it can be the heart it can be the abdomen whatever structure it slices the structure in one single plane and what you therefore see on the screen is depends on where you are slicing the angle at which you're slicing etc so for example now if i cut it how many slices can I do of this? What do you think? How many, what are the number of slices that I can get with my ultrasound beam? Infinite. Exactly. I can cut it. <laughs> I can cut it any number of ways. This is all in the short axis. Yeah. This is all in the long axis. And then if you start taking oblique axis, you, there are, there's no, no there's, you know, it's just an infinite number of planes. Mm. Therefore, when we teach people four or five views, it doesn't mean that they are the only views that are possible. All it means is those are the views that are standard, reproducible. And if I say I'm taking a subcausal four chamber view, you know exactly what I mean. Mm -hmm. And many of them are validated. So if you're taking measurements, then people know that if I took a subcausal four chamber view and if I took a measurement, then this is the normal reference range. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if I just gave you some oblique view, then even you, if I ask you to replicate this, day after tomorrow, you don't know what to do, okay? So all of these views that we get, we although we can get an infinite number of views, we are aiming for a small number of what we call standard views, okay? And what you have to realize with the ultrasound is 
because it slices along one single plane at a time, you have to create your standard view by conceptualizing, by visualizing the anatomy of the heart inside. Now, the thing that I find confusing personally is when you're looking on the screen and you're using your probe and you're, made, you're cutting a plane through the heart, it's not an, uh, an exact uh, image, is it? it? It's flipped over when you're looking at it on the ultrasound Good. screen. So that's the next part. So what we'll do is we'll actually talk about the orientation of an image on the screen. Mm -hmm. And that depends on four. There are, so what I'll teach you in that is that the screen has four um, sides to it. So you have a top side, which is a super. So if you, if, if you flip this, if that's your screen, you have a superficial, you have a deep, and then you have one side, one on the left side and one on the right side, just like a TV monitor. And then you have the image, the ultrasound image here. So in another video, we'll see how we look at the orientation of this image and actually find out where exactly we are in that and what changes we have to make mm -hmm. to our uh, to our um, uh, to the pro. Perfect. Now, just before we finish this, once again, remember that because you have see you have an infinite number of images. So I'm just going to recreate the model of the heart very quickly. Okay, so that's my LV. Now that's going to be my RV wrapping around the LV like this, okay. And that's going to be a little, you know, my right atrium and it's still not connected to the, um, to the right ventricle. Now, if I want to connect, if I want to get a parasternal long axis of the left ventricle, what I mean by that is I want to cut a slice through the belly of the left ventricle from anterior to posterior like this mm -hmm. okay however and a lot of people teach um, a lot of people teach surface anatomy what they say is that if you keep your probe on the third intercostal space angulated to the right shoulder or the 11 o'clock position of the patient then you should get that but the reality is it doesn't work like that okay now now the reality is the heart is hidden by the chest wall, by the skin. So when you keep the probe, when, I'm, when I want to slice, I don't know where exactly my anatomy is. So when I am assuming that I keep it and keeping it on the third intercostal space, pointing towards the right shoulder, I assume that every single heart is located exactly the same. Every single heart is also oriented exactly the same. For example, it's looking along, you know, in that kind of axis from the left hip to the right shoulder. That's not true. The heart can vary in its in its location in the chest because of a number of things. Anatomical reasons. Second, a pleural effusion on the left side might be pushing the heart to the right. A collapse on the left side might be pulling the heart to the left. The patient may have cardiomyopathy and everything could be big. A big distended abdomen could be pushing the heart up. So you just don't know where your patient's heart is going to be. Okay. If I asked you to close your eyes, and in this case, that's what we're doing. We, have, we can't see the heart. And if I say, I want to know if I want to just um, get an exactly perfect parasternal long axis view with my first slice, what are the odds of getting that? What, are the, what is the likelihood of getting that? It's one by infinity. Okay. Because there are an num infinite number of views. Yeah. And therefore, your first view is always going to be wrong. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm just, just going to change the orientation of the heart. Okay. And then I'm going to keep this here. And then I'm going to go like this okay now that's my first view you take away in 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 real time what happens is the first time you keep the view you, you keep your ultrasound probe you take the cover off you take if the chest wall off and you can actually see this on screen okay the view that we wanted was this the view that we are getting is this if you recognize this view and if you recognize that all you have to do to get your standard parasternal long axis view is to turn the probe, rotate the probe by this much. You're going to slowly, 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 slowly rotate till you get an absolutely nice parasternal long axis view with a cylindrical left ventricle and a, uh, a circular or horizontally over or, or an oval right ventricle. Mm. So what you have to therefore realize is the first view is always going to be, I'm going to deliberately use the word wrong. Because there's no such thing as a wrong view. The, this is a perfectly ex good view of the left ventricle. It might not be your standard parasternal long axis view. But when, you're ask, when you want a parasternal long axis, 
and when you get this then you call it a wrong view the likelihood of your first view being perfect is zero mm. virtually zero your first view is always going to be non standard all you have to know is you have to know the anatomy of the heart and you know you have to know what to do to the probe to get what it takes so we'll explain that later with the subcostal view